The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Tiffany L. Copeland is Assistant Professor and Coordinator of the radio program at Montgomery College's Rockville campus. She serves as General Manager of WMCR, Montgomery College's digital radio station. A producer, director, and voice actor, Copeland is completing a doctorate in communication, culture, and media studies at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is, of course, Tiffany Copeland. It is a pleasure to be here, and I'd just like to say thank you so much for coming. Uh, for my presentation today, I will specifically uh, be talking about my course and how the Smithsonian has impacted my class. So the class that um, actually, let me go into the title. It's using audio technology in collaboration with the Smithsonian to give a voice to the voiceless. Now, um, I wanted to play that audio clip. I wanted to start in that way because that explains or that just gives you an idea of just how dynamic this experience is. And um, this is something that we kind of just stepped into when we went into the museum. They were doing a reenactment re and it was just so empowering and so much fun that I wanted you to experience that as well. So as we go through this PowerPoint, you're gonna experience some of the things that myself and my students experienced throughout this Smithsonian Fellowship. Okay, so a very brief overview. I'm going to get into, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the class that I teach. I'll also tell you about our museum experience. And also, I'll play some clips from student documentaries, and I'll just let you know a little bit about the aftermath after you go to the museum and do some things with the Smithsonian. So the course that I uh, taught at that time was 280B. It was an independent study when I taught it, and uh, currently it is a full-fledged class. It is now TVRA 210. And um, in this class specifically, it offers, offers an opportunity for students to gain experience in and exposure to storytelling through audio by producing radio documentaries and other long-form documentaries. So in my mind, I thought this was a wonderful collaboration because normally you would uh, treat this class as a very technical course. You would tell them, okay, this is how you start, uh, this is how you would produce a documentary, here's how you do the narration, here's how you add in your sound effects, um, and things of that sort. But it was very, very, it added a lot of content. Uh, being involved in the Smithsonian added a lot of content to this course, which really made it an invaluable class for me and as well the students. So here is a picture of the students while we were at the museum. The very first museum uh, that we actually went to, um, yeah, this just gives you an example of some of the students in my class. And really the whole idea of adding this component to my course was because I felt like we would be able to challenge paradigms. Because you can easily create an audio documentary, people can create podcasts, but how about let's change it up a little bit and let's just not look at creating something technical for just technical sake. Let us create something in a way where it can make an impact for other people. So really what we're looking at art, not just for art's sake, but we're using it to create art in a functional way so that it really can change lives, help people within our community, and that's really what we were able to do with the Smithsonian component. So challenging paradigms, uh, that means that we were able to watch some sample documentaries. Uh, we watched a lot of those, or listened to a lot of those. Uh, I went over some historical elements of challenging paradigms, like if you look in our history, in terms of maybe the anti-slavery, um, campaign as well as you know anti-lynching things of that sort uh, we were able to read literature as well and uh, usually we do not really read literature in our classes so it's really kind of fantastic and I had an opportunity to show the students how art connects to broadcasting, which a lot of times students do not understand the connection, but it is a creative process. 
and they were able to see how the creative process can unfold after going to the museum and incorporating some of what they experienced at the museum into their documentaries. Uh, we also were able to watch film, um, films too. So we looked at different podcasts as well. A lot of the noteworthy podcasts we went through, uh, we looked at podcasts on like the Mau Mau's in Kenya. We looked at a podcast called 74 Seconds, uh, which is actually a podcast that was created and it focuses on um, Philando Castell, which is an African American man who was shot by the police and it only took 74 seconds for this whole process to happen. And it's a really compelling documentary. So we saw documentaries like that, documentaries that had a lot of meaning. Uh, we also saw a documentary, uh, there's actually a documentary by uh, Glenn Washington. Um, he does podcasts actually, and they're very, very creatively done through music. So we got a chance to see how creativity can be added into the podcast or the audio documentary itself. Okay, so that's some of the class, okay? Now I wanna to talk to you about some of the greatest things that we did while at the Smithsonian, which I would have to say it was our time together. It was wonderful. In addition to that, we went to a lot of museums, which was the highlight of, of, of my experience and also the students' experience as well. So the very first museum that we went to was the National Museum of American History. And uh, now when I went, I said, we're gonna go through all these exhibits. Uh, and it's really quite interesting how things turned out. Actually, on the very cu first couple of exhibits, I said, okay, we'll go together. And then afterwards, I said, they'll do a scavenger hunt. And then they'll go through a lot of these um, on their own. But lo and behold, it took a long time <laughs> to get through all of these exhibits. Uh, but some students actually did go through everything. So these are just some of the exhibits. Um, I, I basically just chose some based on whether or not I felt that they can get inspiration from the particular exhibits. Now, when we were in um, the museum, uh, it's interesting because we came at the same time when they were doing a rendition of, um, of the student sit-ins at the Greensboro Woolworth lunch counter. And I really felt connected to this because Mimi has done a lot of work with this uh, concerning her students and she showed us a really great video. Hopefully you'll get a chance to see that as well. But um, just from looking at this uh, video and coming to the museum and being able to see a reenactment of what had occurred made me just really, uh, you know, it made me a little nervous, but it made chills go down my side because of how they were conveying what had occurred during that time period. So, um, so if you see the three students in the front, well, you actually see some young people in the front sitting down, and they are the people that were randomly chosen from the audience. And if you look at the back, you'll see my students are actually on the side. Uh, they're the ones looking down. And what they try to do is they try to give you a real world experience as far as how you would feel if you were sitting down at a lunch counter, but nobody wanted you to be there. So we'll, we'll take a listen and uh, so you can experience this as well. Fear and emotions. Imagine feeling all those stares behind you. Folks saying things like, what do they think they're doing here? Imagine the Negro woman in the kitchen, whom you thought would be on your side, saying, you're making the race look bad. Imagine the mob starts to yell at you, call you the worst name. Someone flicks hot ashes from a cigarette on the back of your neck. Now they begin to touch you, pushing, poking, spitting. A milkshake gets poured on your head. They might start to attack any minute. Go ahead and take a step closer, everyone. What will you do? You stay strong. Stay focused. Stay non-violent. What would you do? <laughs> and that was a major question that was asked, and uh, it, it really made you think, what would you do? I was actually on the outside, and I was just like these two students here that were trying to crowd to try to like create tension on the people that were sitting. So it was quite an experience to uh, go through this, and I recommend it for everyone, a really enriching experience. 
And we also went to, uh, here's one of the exhibits that we went to, uh, Silicon Valley was one. Uh, since it is new technology, I think it's suited very well with uh, the content for the class. And this here is um, just to create your own icon, okay? Uh, we also, we not only went here, but we also got a chance to sit at a table. Now, one of my students just, you know, he, he needed some rest. So he said, okay, we'll sit down for a moment. And all the students then gathered around him at the table where, um, same thing that uh, was mentioned earlier, how there's like a little dial and then you spin it around and then there's a word that it sticks on, maybe freedom. Okay, maybe liberty. And then from there, the students have to choose pictures where they think it, that that suits that word the best. So the students really just enjoyed it so much. I was amazed. It was a little game. They enjoyed it. We stayed there for quite some time. And then afterwards, I just asked them, well, what did you think? So these are just a couple of comments that they made after the game. After rocking from the table, I feel like I understand when people go through like homeless people. I had a uh, skewed uh, idea about why homeless people are where they are, but now I have an open mind about their stories and backgrounds that I don't know, so I'm going to be more sensitive to their story. What I want also want to be about different opinions that I cannot agree, respect, but I can just say, okay, you don't have to argue all the time. So that's another thing I learned. I like the table because you can express how you feel and what your thoughts are, and that's what I like about this whole thing. Well, in the game discussion, uh, it's very uh, educational to me because you find out how other people think outside the box and also finding new ways to think in the box as well, like especially on the rights. Like everybody has the right to protest, everybody likes the right to education, everybody likes have the right, you know, to uh, free love. So, and if you love who you want, however you want, it's your own opinion, your own ways, and you shouldn't be judged on it. And that's your right. So I just like to say every experience that you had really helps you to grow as a person. And I think that uh, these little experiences really help the students to grow. And uh, here's the other museum that we eventually went to, which was uh, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Uh, by chance, we had an opportunity to come here as well. And um, I asked the students after the museum visits, I just asked them, what pictures or what um, objects were most compelling for you? So I actually had them uh, send me those, and I wanted to see the connection between the objects and what they decided to do for their documentary. So here's one of the students. I'm going to go through a couple of the students. Here's one. And as you see, all of these images were actually from the African American uh, Museum. And you notice on the far uh, left, that's the, the brown bag test, where if you were uh, darker than that bag, you could not get into certain associations. Um, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm darker than that bag. I definitely couldn't get into a few of the associations that made that as a requirement. So that was most compelling for her. Um, also at the bottom, Black is Beautiful, uh, the woman with the afro. Um, we also have uh, the murder of Emmett Till, uh, which is on the ground level in the slavery section. So uh, it says, nation shocked, vow action, lynching of Chicago youth. And I'm actually from the Chicagoland area. My parents are from Mississippi, uh, where he went to go to Mississippi. So I really felt connected to that story. And uh, um, if you do end up going to that museum, I would definitely recommend that you have your students go through there. Uh, and also, she felt as though the, the women on money was uh, pretty important to her as well. So all of them connected to her in some kind of way. And as we go through, so I'm going to play a clip of her documentary. I'm going to play a clip of two student documentaries. And uh, this is her. She actually wanted to do a documentary about how a young African-American female student with a disability could be impacted by the possible overhaul of the Affordable Care Act. Um, she felt like uh, she felt like young people could be in um, a bad position if this is revoked because of the insurance that they get through their family. So I'll just play a clip from that, and this is the nurse who she interviewed. 
I am concerned. I am concerned that if we, who are the ones who receive health care or depend on health care, do not fight, do not fight for the right to have equitable access, that if we sit back and we do not bring to light the disparity that occurs, that we will go back to the days where we will we can have a child die from having an abscess because his mother depended on, you know, Medicaid and no one accepted Medicaid. So or we could go back to a mother losing her daughter because there was a budgetary decision made versus a human decision made. And that is the piece that concerns me. But if we who are champions who believe in equity and who believe in reducing the disparity in our society stand up and fight, then I think we can go back and put in place universal health care beyond what uh, the Affordable Care Act has done. I am concerned, but I'm also hopeful. Now, another student um, picked out many pictures of like American patriotism, the flag. Uh, we also have um, you know, the Statue of Liberty and things of that sort. So his documentary was about uh, how two students came to the United States from Mexico, and they were actually DACA recipients. So I just wanted to play a clip from that. If you can, yeah. Because, like, if he's going to end it, okay, cool, he's going to end it, whatever. We can't do anything about it. He's the president of the United States. But I was like, well, what's the next step that we as dreamers and the community can do to, you know, ask Congress to give a Clean Dream Act? Or who could we go to to make sure that they weren't just going to take every, everybody that had that guy's government-issued IDs and stuff away and that we would, again, be illegal? And it's very scary because... You feel like you're part of this country, but at the same time, you feel shunned by everybody that thinks that immigrants are, like, bad and immigrants take people's jobs because it's not... Because, like, I've seen it. Like, my parents have always worked, like, extremely hard. Everybody that I know works extremely hard. And I don't feel like they take anything away from this country. Like, we don't have Medicaid. We don't have Medicare. We don't take any, like, federal money or government money from the country. So... Because we don't, we can't apply to any of those programs. So we, it's not like we take away tax money or anything. We actually we pay our taxes. We give back to this country. And then for them to, for some people to tell us that it's not okay for us to be here is kind of like hurtful. But I think we just need to continue like fighting for a Clean Dream Act. And hopefully Congress will pass it and we'll be allowed to stay here and have more opportunities like we've been having recently. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to fast forward through this. And another thing that I thought was interesting, yeah, um, we went to the African American Museum. So when you go through all of this information on social justice, and when you hear about all of these wrongs that have been done throughout time, how do you then, therefore, kind of get to a position where you can feel okay with what has occurred and feel empowered to do something in the present? So this reminded me of that because um, this is happening, this is what you will go to when you come to the museum, and this is just really, really something that is um, kind of like a very nice place to just sit and think about your life and the way it, you would like for it to unfold. Oh, wait, well, okay. okay, so we're just going to skip through this. <laughs> okay, so in the message at, the, um, at that part, it said, we are determined to work and fight until justice rolls, runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream, which is a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, the aftermath of all of what I've said is that I think that our students, um, or actually the Smithsonian, made this course into a higher quality course because it added what we didn't have, which was the substance. 
I think it really helps students to think critically about what they're going to do their documentary on. Uh, we were able to explore creativity in class, and um, it made learning exciting and adventurous because we were able to go outside of the class, which is what I've always wanted to do. I've done it a time or two. But we were able to go outside of the class and get together and have a rich learning experience. And it also gave students more of an appreciation for the intersection between art and the media. And it's not just work, but it can be creative as well. And it has affected me greatly as I close. I have become even more of an artist myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, my husband helped me with this. He does sculpture, and I started to do a quilt, so I just wanted to show you that. And I would just like to say uh, this Faculty Fellowship Thursdays will never, ever be the same again in my life. And thank you so much to Mimi. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you to my entire cohort and everybody involved in the process. It was truly a phenomenal experience, one that I will never forget. Thank you. Thank you.